Let's quickly get through a few other topics while we're at it. Now, uh, you know, this has been swirling around in the, the suburb of St Kilda in Melbourne as to whether that sword down Captain Cook statue should return. You've got one Labor-aligned councillor is now planning to call for community consultation at a council meeting on Wednesday, saying, quote, I think we need to reflect on the fact that the statue was put in that location 100 years ago as part of the national myth-building around the discovery of Australia, the fact that this empty land was found in the Southern Hemisphere, which is ultimately untrue. Oh. Evelyn, I'm, I'm not... I, I, look, anyone who watches the late debate knows every time we've talked about Captain Cook over <laughs> the last few weeks... Don't get him started. I've talked about all the dates. Captain Cook was dead nine years before the first fleet arrived. These people are just so historically illiterate, and if we give them a single inch and say, well, OK, we're not going to put the statue up, you know, it keeps getting targeted by vandals. I mean, you're saying to vandals, go and cut down every statue in the country, aren't you? Absolutely, and I think we've got to call this what it is. It's a hate crime, OK, because it, it's targeted and it's for a specific reason. But like you said, they don't hate Captain Cook. Do you know why? Because they don't know him. They don't know <laughs> what he stood for. They don't, they don't even know how he is related to the First Fleet, clearly. Um, so you've got to go, well, what is it about Captain Cook that they hate? They hate what he represents. What does he represent? He represents you. He represents me. He represents us. He represents the white Australian. And it is a hate crime against that. And that is exactly what it is. And you've got to also ask yourself the question, if the shoe was on the other foot and there was vandalism, and things of Indigenous statues or of something, what would happen? You would have a 24-7 security asset placed on there to make sure it didn't happen again. You would have taxpayer funders do it tomorrow, yesterday. They would do it as quick as they can. Um, and it would become the new shrine, the new idol of the modern state religion, which is wokeism. And this is a hate crime against white Australians. It's a hate crime against the British. Against It's a hate crime against the history of our country. We have to acknowledge all of it, yes, um, but erasing history and erasing things like this solves nothing. It just promotes hate and division. So rebuild it, rebuild it better than ever before and send a message that we won't tolerate this in our country. Yeah, make it giant, like 10 <laughs> times that size. Like the big bull Just in like New York. Every the time you tear thing. it down, we're going to double it. We're going to do it bigger and better. That's right. And this is, we've had this discussion before, Joe. but, you know, every time one of these nutcases comes out and says this stuff, it just bolsters everyone against them. Well, strangely enough, the call actually proves the idiocy of the call itself and the action, obviously, in vandalising it. And, yes, it is... I mean, the point is you wouldn't erect a statue of Captain Cook in 2024 Australia because that wouldn't reflect the values that we have at the moment. But the point is that when it was erected, that was representative of the values and the society that Australia was at the moment, or most of the country was. And that's why history is important, because it's a window into how people used to see themselves. And that's why you want to maintain it. If you, you know, if you were to knock down a Victorian era um, terrace house these days, uh, you wouldn't replace it with an exact replica of a Victorian terrace. But does that mean you should just wipe out everything that was built in the 1800s because, you know, you don't like what the situation was there? But, I mean, we saw the same thing with, you know, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris that got burned to the ground, albeit not deliberately. But, you know, should well, that... Was should, it? Well, should, that, should that then yeah, be, you know... Was it? Was should it that then be, well, maybe, maybe it was. So, but should that... And they had a debate in France about how to exactly to rebuild it. But should you say, oh, no, the Catholic Church was this terrible, um, oppressive, anti-Semitic, uh, racist institution, so we can't possibly rebuild that cathedral because that would embody all those values. And, again, yeah. this is pe people being scared of history or, or, or thinking that history should somehow represent them now don't understand not only history, they don't understand time travel. No, they don't. Very quickly, but 30 also, seconds, Paul. There, there are um, 500 Indigenous people, I double-checked this, 500, uh, according to the census, 500 Indigenous people who live in the city of Yarra. If the city of Yarra is fair dinkum about trying to uh, change the past, get rid of the colonial, this, that and the other, then the first motion, council this week, is to dissolve the council. Here, here. Literally to dissolve the council, to dissolve that way of local government, mm -hmm. and if you want to put local elders in charge, good luck. But as long as you want to maintain, to have both sides, yep. right, which is to pretend colonialism terrible, but I want to keep the mayoral chains, <laughs> then move on. When they say uh, they want their land back, go on, just give it to them if Correct. you believe in it.